Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, gonna be a match on Circuit Breakers between Hero and Light. Top right, it is our Tealsburg player Hero. And in the top left, it's a Brown Terran player. It is Light. So I kind of feel like this is an even matchup, right? These two are elite players in their own right, but not at the top of the ladder. And yeah, I just kind of feel like we're going to have an even game here today on Circuit Breakers. Woo! Alright, hit that like button if you're excited for ZVT action on the channel. And uh, yeah, hit that subscribe. I'm here uh, five times a week with Brood War content. Five times a week. Holy cannoli. Who else does that? Who else can give that to you? Hmm? I don't know. There's probably channels out there that can, but I can't think of any. Not at the moment, anyway. So Terra the Overlord heading up, checking the wrong direction. But it's a cross spawn, so like, I don't know. Who's going to Overlord? You never Overlord scout cross spawn. That's dumb. It leaves your Overlord too exposed to like Marines just wandering across the map at any point. So Terry here. Yes, Terry. Indeed, those are some minerals. Thank you for reporting back. I really appreciate that. And it looks very much like we're going to get a, uh, yeah, 12 pool of Rooney here. Out of the hero. Yep, there's your 12th drone. There is your almost 300 minerals. There is the drone head. Ooh. Never mind. You. You are going to be a hatchery. This guy is scouting. Respect. It is some respect for light and the potential of proxy racks, man. Potential even just of a two racks opening. Enough to frighten little hero here into scouting with that drone. Look. I'm never going to say no about scouting. I'm never going to tell you not to worker scout. You should worker scout. You should see what's going on with your opponent all the time. It's a stupid good advantage. And at your level of play, it's not going to cause you any losses to send a worker out and go scout it anyway. Okay, so love this play. <laughs> and I mean, what he's going to see is very standard stuff. No gas and a barracks, which indicates we're probably going to see a quick expansion next to Rooney. So, Hero at this stage, honestly, should probably go for a quick third. I wouldn't say no to that from him. Yeah, for sure. Look, he checks the gas. He's, there's no gas. He wants to run away because of the Marine popping out of that barracks. And maybe cause some problems. He does want to know if there's an expansion coming up, though, right? It's a different experience if there isn't an expansion and there's no gas. But yeah, it definitely looks like Light is going to go for the Command Center. This is one of his well-known Smurf names, Eros December. Or deck, I don't know. I assume that stands for December. Thanks very much again to the Smurf list out on Wikipedia. There's just a huge list of professional players as well as their known Smurf names. It's a lifesaver in situations like these, without question. I believe I got this replay pack off of Team Liquid. Team Liquid forums, just a hero replay pack that somebody posted out there. If you just go to the forums and search replay pack, you'll find some old stuff. A lot of them are unfortunately hosted on, you know, places like Mega Upload and stuff, and the links are expired, but to this point, there's a lot of stuff you can still find out there, so I'm not gonna give it a shot if you want some replays, is what I'm trying to say. Also, BW Replays is very nice as well. But third hatch here from Hero, but not in a third base position, which I'm honestly... I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, we're clearly going for a two-base Mutalisk opening, but I just... Hmm... I mean, that's why the SCV scattered to see if there was a quick third up here or not, because if it's a quick third base, then it's not going to be Mutalisk super fast as a result. But if it is a two-base, and your lair's coming up, then yeah, you want to know the timing so you can get your turrets up in time to deal with these here Mutalisks. Academy coming in, pretty standard timing here from Light as well. The music is all sorts of hype, and like... <laughs> I don't even know if there's anything to be hyped about right now, but I kind of like it. The music's just, it's always good. Finally going for Metabolic Boost to delay that for a faster lair. Got that second gas rolling fairly early, so this usually indicates we're going to see a decent number of Mutalisks. If it's really just the one gas, you know, through the production of the lair, then what you're going to see is maybe five Mutas. Um, and then maybe you can go from there, but what this allows is a heftier gas bank, which allows for an earlier, bigger flock of Mutalisks, which, again, is really important for Light to know about. Zergling doesn't, uh, just sees there's no second gas, doesn't get into the main base at all, but there's nothing to see here anyway. I mean, we're just, it's two racks opening. 
Really probably going to go for an 8-rack Science Vessel kind of a thing here. Ooh, Firebat too. So yeah, this is going to be a push on the natural base. Or if there was a third base to push, maybe you can do that. But I don't know. Either way, I love this push out here. And I love the scout for Hero seeing the push out is coming. Seeing the Firebat, the couple Marine, or the couple Medics rather, and the handful of Marines. Zerglings come in this back door and they're like, hey, why don't you stop mining for a second? Also, run, there's a Firebat coming to kill us. <gasps> they got a Marine. Is that first blood? That might be first blood. So here come the Sunkins, which are really important here. It's not a three Sunken scenario, because this is an early push. This is one, like, before you can get, you know, 12 Marines and two Medics and a couple Firebats. You do have the Stim, which is scary, but two Sunkins should be enough to handle this, and I think this is something where Light knows that's what's going on. He's not expecting to be able to win this push. He just wanted to force some Sunkins out from the Zerg player, force him to sacrifice two drones to make these and the resources on top of it. I mean, they're not super cheap units, Sunkins aren't. They do cost, so there we go, six, seven Mutalisks. Like I said, we're gonna get more, probably eight, nine, we can even get up to 10 and 11 here based on the amount of gas we've got. Minerals, a bit of a limiting factor right now, but that's usually easily remedied by the fact that you have a million drones getting minerals in StarCraft. You usually need mineral dumps because you're getting so minerals. Yeah, so there's 10 and 11. Always oh, supply blocked. Bummer. 10 it is. Range upgrade for Marines coming in. U238 shells. And... Okay. So, yeah, okay, yeah, so exactly. We're going eight racks. Science Vessel irradiate shenanigans here out of light, which we've seen work pretty well. Mutas are heading up. They're going to stack up, up on each other right about now. Queen's Nest before a third base. From Hero, what are these shenanigans? All right, well, Mutas are doing Mutalisk things. There's three turrets up. They're just trying to kill SCVs more than they're trying to kill the turrets. There you go, got enough Mutas to kind of one, well, not to kind of one-shot them, to absolutely one-shot them. Lurker Aspect getting started. And this is all very standard stuff, and a Hive on two base. Is he trying to get up to Defilers fast here? We've seen this, and I, it can work. Uh, there have been situations where I can tell you that it can work. But it's not easy. <laughs> it makes you vulnerable because you're sacking army in order to get all this tech up, right? And the hive upgrade is not cheap. It's a ton of gas, getting the defiler mount out, getting the upgrades that you need to make the defilers good. Ah. Uh... We'll see. We'll see if Light can take advantage of this, or if Hero's going to be able to have the benefit of getting the Filers out fast against this. This is not enough Lings and Mutalisk to handle this. I'm just, I'm going to tell you right now. Get out of there. Get out of there. If there was maybe another, you know, 10 or 12 Zerglings, I think that could have worked out, but... Yeah, we're just playing the Mutalisk hover about and be annoying game. They basically become mosquitoes in this situation, except mosquitoes that can murder grown men in power armor. So, it's not, not exactly a one-to-one -one scenario here. Alright, so the meter is just bouncing. I keep... Okay, finally, there's a third, there's a third base down here. So that's why the Mutas are in this area, because they are protecting the third base, which, again, a nine-minute third is pretty darn late. But, you know what? Defiler Mound coming up. Nidus Network available, ready to pop on that third base in just a minute. Is he actually... Yeah, not yet. But soon, because that Nidus Canal is popped. And then you put up the other end over here, because that's awesome. And Radiate's coming out. So we just kind of speed run to the late game here in this match, right? Radiate's going to be available. That's going to be super important. The Defilers are going to be out with all sorts of upgrades like Plague and Consume. And we're just going to spend a while. There's your Nidus. Okay. So we're going to spend a while just in late game ZVT where the Terran has gone and eight Raxer. By that I mean he's actually making tanks. Never mind. And he doesn't have additional Rax here. Okay. All right. So it's a little bit of a Marine tank push with science vessels. It doesn't change a lot. Other than you have less anti-air to deal with the mutalisks. So, I don't know. 
All right, I like this. We're pushing down to the third base because if you can kill this, it's pretty much an insta win. Scourge, ready to go. Trying to focus on them science vessels. Wipe them out here. Is that a faint? And then Light pulls back. He has makes a beeline for that third base. And then he's like, nah. We'll go over here instead. The problem with doing that is the Nidus Canal exists. So, I mean, any units that were sent over there can be brought over here now. Whatever. I don't know what that was from Light. A bit of a faint. An attempt to throw Hero off. Uh, yeah, Lurkers, maybe burrow in support of where there's some Sunkins here. That'd be cool. Oh, oh that was a drop. Okay, so there's a drop over here. Killed a couple drones. Gets entirely cleaned up by the sheer number of Mutalisks that are over here. But then it means the Mutas aren't over here to help with this attack, which tanks versus Sunkins. It's good to have. Let's see, trying to irradiate. Yeah, the Defiler gets irradiated. Gets a Dark Swarm up. And Sunken's getting a couple hits there. So good. I think this is fine for Hero. I think he has stabilized. One, two, three, four. Oh, the Irradiate. The split off is a little bit late. Yeah, I think it, the age of the Mutalisk might be over at this point. There are four of them remaining. We are not making any more, and they're all very low HP. But hey, they're getting some value. Like, I'm not going to tell them to not keep trying. Just, okay, now they're all dead. Ow. 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 Oh, my gosh. Three on super low HP counts. 10 HP there. Fourth base coming up from Hero. But, you know, the good news for Hero is he held that attack, I think, very well. Didn't lose hardly anything. And it's going to be the same story over here, I think, once that Dark Swarm comes up. Adrenal Glands is going to finish very soon, which is one of my favorite upgrades in the game. Just makes Zergling so much better in every possible way. Are you just trying to outrange these lurk? Oh, there's your Dark Swarm. Okay. Now you got a Siege up. Yeah, so Dark Swarm is just a, a zoning tool against an elite Terran player. You're, against a lower level player, you're probably just going to kill this whole thing with some Dark Swarm and some Lynx. Play go! Oh, the Defiler didn't make it back inside in time. Not inside the Dark Swarm. Yeah, against a lower level player, Dark Swarm their army and jump on them with Lurkers and Lings and they'll all just die. But against somebody like Light, for example, he's just going to move out. <laughs> he's just going to, excuse me, just going to make my way out here. No problemo. Third base is rolling. It's minerals only, but heck, we're making a lot of Marines anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, and now the transition. Now the transition into the mech. I did see those vultures earlier. It didn't really cue me or clue me into the fact that we're seeing the mech transition until, well, just right this very second. Are these guys still injured? Oh my gosh, they're still injured from this plague. These poor medics. Oh, all their energy has been drained out. Thought light would be smarter than that, but no. Look at these guys transferring into an absolute war zone. Nice snipe on that tank. These medic, ah, these marines just do not stand a chance here. This is okay. Here's getting some really beautiful value out of this tiny dark swarm and like a zergling and a lurker, man. Okay, two zerglings. God, tank down to a lurker. That should not actually probably ever happen all that much. Okay, the good news for Light is he's taking this top right base. It is not super well defended. Uh, we do have some vultures and spider mines in here in case some links try to run, run up and try to deal with it. This is exactly what the intent was of this group here. Was just to completely eradicate any attempt of Hero to send links up this right side. So that went so swimmingly. Absolutely 100% part of the plan there. Got seven lurkers in production. Uh, so four basing Zerg is good, but now... You gotta start taking these little more exposed bases. Yeah, see? The whole, the exposed base. Good snipe on that defiler by those vultures, though. I, uh, light. Light's control. Excellent. Muy excelente. Out of him. Uh, there are two mutalisks. Nope, three mutas that are alive are just kind of scouting this top base to make sure the light doesn't take it. But what you don't know is this is happening. Pro problematically for the Zerg player. Now, this is a map that Zerg struggle with because taking this base or this base means that you're on the low ground and tanks kind of set up here and murder you. 
Also, I heard an irradiate. I don't know what it was, though. Yeah, I mean, this is... This is really... Oh, overlords? Okay. Sure. Irradiate an overlord. I don't see why not. I'll show this cavern coming in. And it kind of looks like maybe Light wants to expand up here. Yeah, he's setting up some defenses. I don't know. I'm telling you. I've seen a lot of games of TDZ Circuit Breakers in my day. And the number of times a, an elite Terran gets a mech army out here and the Zerg player is able to crush it and over, overcome it is not, not many. It's not many times, I'm going to tell you right now. Especially when the Terran's able to get this base up. I, uh, he owns the map control right here at 15 minutes. Yeah, this is a problem. I mean, expanding down here is pretty much required for Hero, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Problem is, there's vultures that can actually kill this because it's on so low, low HP because it just got constructed. The thing is, they don't know it exists. We're still trying this circling thing, huh? Oh, the tanks on the high ground. Uh, all these marines do end up dead. Ling's trying to get up this ramp is just not... Not a particularly great thing. Oh, 3 HP on this overlord. It's going to get a lurker up here. Oh my gosh. Genius. Couple spines out and then completely dead. All right, well, that was fine. It was fine, it was. Meanwhile, another, man, another lurker dark swarm attack. Here at Light's third base, going to force a complete lift off, killing some SCBs, going against this bunker. All right, all right. Again, little, little wins. Little wins here and there for the Zerg player can make this possible. Just wandering. Or there's not enough army to stop this from happening. We're just going to come up. Oh, goodness. Dude, plaguing, oh, plaguing these and getting a lurker on top of them would be incredible. Get in the dark swarm. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Not getting in. Nope, going the wrong way because the AI is dumb. Cool. So Defiler died there for no reason. Hero's attention maybe was elsewhere? I mean, he's got the drops. So, I mean, I feel like that's 40% of this thing. If you're going to beat a Mechang Terran player and you got the drops, you have a fighting chance. The problem starts to come. Wow, this lurk. Eight kills on this lurker? This is working out much better than I expected to. Nine kills on this lurker with all of 12 HP. Another just trading zerglings for spider mines. I'm actually going to... Wow. Actually, I mean, okay, I like this. Kind of keeping the Terran player on their back foot by kind of constantly running at them like this so they're not the ones putting the pressure on. It's okay. You distract it, they come over, you drop. You got the lurkers, you got the defilers. This base gets lifted up again. Okay, so Hero is giving himself a fighting chance in this match right now. Oh, three science vessels, pretty good. Two science vessels go down. Whoa, massive Plague Ooh. All over a huge group of vultures. Is there a Zergling around? Is there a doctor in the house? Look at, oh, look at him, he's up. Mm, the drops. I cannot emphasize to you enough how good the drops are against Mecking Terran. And honestly, really good against Protoss too in late game if you're a Zerg player. We don't see it enough. We don't see it enough from Zerg. But when we do, I feel like it's extremely effective. Like really, really good. Another group of Lings heading out. We got 10 Ultralisks in production at 19 minutes. That's what we like to see. So just the Ling Ultra kind of throw yourself at the Terran until they die strategy is um, attempted. These Ultras are already super injured thanks to Spider Mines before they get even halfway across the map here. But they're going to take down a Missile Turret, which is good for the Ego. It's always nice to kill something. Coming up a ramp wherein there are Siege Tanks here. I guess we're dropping on them, though. Okay, I'm going to not say no to this. Wow! Alright, so Hero just manages to get a ton of his army up to this top right. He's going to wipe out this base. All these SCVs are dead. Wow! 
And also, Ultralisks running into this 12 o'clock, causing major problems for Light. Remember, these Vultures are very injured, so they get tickled once by the Zergling Ultralisk Kaiser Blade, and all of a sudden, it's chaos. It is absolute chaos right now for Light. Dude, hero. Hero fighting. That's, again, all you can ask is that you fight against Mecking Terran because it's extremely hard to deal with for even elite level Zerg players. This Ultralisk is like, ah, fire bats and you send fire bats and the vultures against me? Which makes him sound Russian. He's an Ultralisk. He's not from Russia. Whatever you do, don't come over here to these spider mines, buddy. 17 kill Ultralisk. Dude, is Hero... Wow. Is Hero going to win this game? This is crushing... Oh my gosh. Almost went over there. Dude, don't fight the... Are you fighting the... You're fighting the Ultralisk. I know it doesn't have a lot of HP, but dude's got 23 kills. Okay, finally the Vultures take him down. He was just too injured. And then you do the drops because then the spider mines that are in the way don't actually matter. Are you going to really try to drop on this? Oh, I love this. I love this. Wow. Dude, I think Hero's got this game. He's up 177 to 146 total supply. It's 58 workers for light right now. His army keeps getting obliterated. He just lost the top right base. This one is a little bit healthy. The 12 o'clock is better than expected. This Ultralisk with three kills. Good for him. Okay, so Light seems to have stabilized here, right? He still has income from his natural. He still has his third. And he still has the 12 o'clock. And yeah, he's got enough to handle the shenanigans now. This Ultralisk is dead thanks to uh, the tanks that are in the general area. Okay, so that was extremely well defended from Light. This is, this is some really, really good back and forth right now. And it's the drops. Oh, look at him saving. Look at him saving Zerglings. Oh, the Irradiate means you better drop soon. It's nice for the Overlord that being Irradiated doesn't actually injure the Zerglings inside the Overlord. Radiation, like, Irradiation-proof uh, inside coating. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> And this is what happens when you just run across the map is you just sacrifice Zerglings to the spider mine gods and Ultralisks but this has been dude the drops here today this has been some of the best dropping I have ever seen from a professional Zerg player Hero is incorporating the drops into his play beautifully more SCVs are going down somehow Light is back up to 77 worker okay that's down but you know this is wow that was a really nice economic uh, recovery. And, like, part of that is because he didn't lose his command centers to Ling Ultra, right? So, he's able... Well, this is interesting. He's able to remake his SCVs because his command centers don't actually die against Ling Ultra. Very interesting stuff. Look at him. He's just pumping SCVs from this base. I guess this one's not making any more, but he's down to 67 workers, which is like, what? Look at this. Hero's taking this base. He's taking the 6 o'clock. He's taking this one. He's got officially about half. Nah, he is a base up because technically this base for light doesn't exist. But Hero's bank. He's got a ton of minerals here. I mean, he's he's feeling good. It, it could all kind of fall apart with a bad engagement into like 15 tanks. Like maybe right here, for example. I don't know. We got leagues coming up. I, Both sides here. It's kind of thinning out Hero's forces a little bit. But the Dark Swarm is incredible. Your radiates are going down on whatever you can at the moment. But yeah, this left side attack is pretty well cleaned up. But we're back in your 12 o'clock house. Seeing your light. And we're going to kill more of your SCVs. And the tank count, I think, has been reduced to effectively. Man. Great Plague. I just... 
This is... This is going to be a game where the Zerg player is going to have lost a lot more than the Terran player and is going to win anyway. Because despite the fact that it's been a lot, it's been enough. The amount of stuff that's died for the Terran. The drops. It's just... I don't know what else to say about this game other than showing up with Ultralisks and Lings on top of Terran bases without tanks even giving a chance to defend against them by... You know, covering this ramp, for example. It's a lot of tanks, but it is not enough tanks. They just, they can't cover everywhere at once, especially with the drops. Okay, so, this, oh, SCV devs galore here. Again, somehow lights at 67 workers. He's got more, more workers than drones on the map right now, but uh, scrappy, the scrap-tasticness of this match. Top right base, dead again. Once again, command center lifts off so it can land later and make more SCVs. Got a, ooh, another small tiny attack coming into the third base. More SCVs dying, but again, Light just refuses to go below 60 workers for the last few minutes because he's replacing them so effectively. Okay, so this base, two bases are now dead for Light. He's Kind of bringing in, re re bringing in reinforcements to try to deal with them. But your tanks aren't sieged, and that is your good game hero! Takes the win in 26 minutes and 33 seconds from a position that is extremely, extremely hard to come back from. That was absolutely amazing. An absolutely incredible incredible tvz hero gets the win against a mecking terran light today with ling ultra which again not always great but ling ultra with dropper lords so much better did you see how much light was on the back foot today did you see how many times he had bases he had to recover and bases he had to clean out that is how you win a game of starcraft you keep your opponent on the back foot right did he ever lose a base no i think hero won this entire time Without losing a single hatchery, he got away with getting up the fast defiler mound, did not die to the push that came to kill him during that time, expanded to a third base late, you know, eight, nine minute third base, but from there, took this base pretty quickly, got this one going, got this one going, got this one going, even expanding to the sides, because that's how confident he was he was going to win this game. And then, yeah, just showing up, man, just showing up with overlords full of lings and ultras and defilers, dropping on bases and being like, ha, where is your god now? Where are your, you know, your spider mines in the middle of the map are here to prevent that kind of thing. They're here to prevent a huge pack of lings from showing up unannounced on top of a base. But when you fly them in, it doesn't matter. I am surprised by Light's complete lack of goliaths in this game, though. He got turrets, which was fine. But a complete and utter lack of uh, the the goliaths, especially with Karamboos, I think would have helped in dealing with incoming overlords that are trying to drop on your face. But no... I don't think we saw any of those today. Could be wrong. All right. End of the day, 26 minutes and 33 seconds on your game time. 206,000 points for Hero. Uh, for Light, rather, and 226 for Hero. This is actually, yeah, okay. Outproduced the Terran by about 250, 225. Ended up getting outkilled 200 by 200 there, but the outproduce is able to cover that. So yeah, that, that'll do quite nicely. Look at this. Raised 32 Terran buildings, lost a single Zerg building today. That is a great ratio. It's Again, it's weird for Zerg, but still, that indicates that hardly anything died on the ground uh, for base. Zero bases died is what that says. And then resources just far outstripping for gas. A lot of Ultras were made today. A lot of Defilers were made today. Minerals mined 7,000 more and outspent the Terran player by a full 12,000 resources uh, and then some like 12,500 300 so that's how you do I don't <laughs> that's it that is how you beat a mecking Terran is it easy no is it kind of cool when you pull it off yeah yes yes it is all right, sweet. So that right there is going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.